Hey for everybody, Magpie9901 here, just doing another part of my little beginner's guide to Battlefield 1 and in this video we're going to look at soldier customization. Um, I've already done a video on this but they've changed the way you can access the customization now and I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in this video so let's get into it. So once you're on the home screen you want to customize your soldier, simply go to soldier this gives you a little screen with all your main stats for your soldier on how many medals you've got, codex, books you've taken, dog tags, etc, etc. Now the term customize your soldier is a little bit misleading because you can't actually customize how your soldier looks. How it looks there is just a representation for the screen depending on what side you play for within the game will depend what your soldier actually looks like. But what you can customise is the loadout for each of the different classes of soldier that's available. So let's have a look at that right now. Now as you'll see along the bottom of the screen you've got your four different classes. You've got Assault, Support, uh, sorry, Medic, Support and Scout. So it's the customization is the same for each one so I'm not going to go through each one. But I'll just give you a quick look at the loadout. First of all you've got your primary weapon clicking on here will bring up the list of all the primary weapons that are available for this class. Obviously those with the uh, war bonds next to it are the ones that you can unlock using war bonds as long as you are of a sufficient rank to unlock those guns. I'm rank 10 so I can unlock any of them now. So if you choose a gun you obviously get the uh, little cog settings cog next to it. If you click on that it brings up the settings for that particular weapon. And the good thing with Battlefield 1 is there isn't a myriad of different options for your weapons. In Battlefield 4 it got quite complicated. Even for veteran players the amount of different customizations that you could do to a weapon were just insane at one point. It got a little bit ridiculous. But this is Battlefield 1, it represents World War 1 and obviously back then guns were just coming into the own. You know, the, it was the first big war really that used a lot of weaponry. So there wasn't a great amount of customization to these weapons, and this is shown within the game. So your main options are your optics. Depending on the weapon, will depend on what optics there are. There isn't usually a great amount of um, options anyway. Then you've got your magnification for that optic. <coughs> Totally dependent on what you want to go for. I stick to this for this gun, although I do go up two times two for certain weapons. Depends on what you're using and what its range is, things like that. Then you've got the barrel. You can have a bayonet on or you can have it without. It's entirely up to you. Your visuals are how your gun looks. Now, each gun obviously comes with a base visual. But as you progress through the game you will unlock battle packs and battle packs contain different skins for different weapons. And it is just look of the draw on when you will get a skin for a weapon that you currently own. So if you did get a skin for a gun that you have, you can apply that skin. And then obviously when you kill somebody they'll see that they were killed with that gun with that skin. And that's basically what a battle pack is within this game. There's a not a great deal to it. Then you've got recoil, you can choose which way your gun goes after recoil which is quite useful depending on your style of play. I just keep mine in the middle, I like to, that's how I play. But depending on how you play and how you centre your weapon as you're firing you can choose either left or right which can help within the game if you have a different playing style to me obviously. Then going back you've got your sidearm exactly the same as before same options the ones with the war bonds you can unlock you can also customize the skins on them not a great deal of depth there at all um, I don't think the option yeah you've got magnification options and that's it there's not really a great deal to the side arms but I have to say that in this battlefield game the side arms do count they're not an afterthought like in previous games you will find that you will use them a lot more in battlefield 1 and they are useful. You can actually kill people with them. I always struggled within previous Battlefield games to kill people with sidearms. But in this game I found it a hell of a lot easier. Then you've got your gadgets. 
Obviously, for an assault class, you're going to be looking to take down vehicles. So I've gone with the AT rocket gun. You've also got anti-tank man, dynamite, etc., etc. Then you've got your second gadget. Gone with the anti-tank grenades here. The options for gadget one and gadget two are exactly the same. You just choose two of those from the drop-down menus. Then you've got your grenades. Not a great deal to go into there. Quite self-explanatory, all of those. And then you've got your melee weapons. Now, melee weapons, basically all you're choosing here is the type of animation that you want when you use a melee weapon, because they all do the same thing, they all kill somebody, but depending on what you choose will depend on the type of animation that you get, and I have to say all the animations are brilliant, they're really good to watch. And that is basically the weapon customization. I shall quickly show you a battle pack and what happens when you open one. These are dropped randomly throughout the game. Um, I did think that your performance within the game was what determined when you get a battle pack, but quite honestly, I don't think there's any predetermined parameters for a battle pack drop in. I think they simply drop when they drop, and it's just look at the draw. So we'll have a look at this one. This is just a normal battle pack, could contain any of these skins down on the right here. So let's have a look, see what we get. And we have got the Valiant Legendary skin. Now what you can do with these is if you want to keep this skin for this particular weapon, you can simply click here and add it to the inventory. If, for instance, you don't want to keep it or you have gained this skin before, you can then scrap it for scraps. Now what the scraps do I'll add that to inventory because I haven't got that. And we'll go back to the menu that I need. Uh, battle packs. Get battle packs. Now what you can do with the scraps, if you look along here, you've got the different battle packs and how much it will cost in scraps to buy one. So the more battle packs that drop with things in that you don't want, you can scrap them and then use those scraps to buy new battle packs that could potentially have better skins in them. And that is pretty much soldier customization in a quick little video. There's not a great deal to it, which helps new players. I found it refreshing myself. I've played a lot of Battlefield games, but I found it refreshing that the customization options aren't very deep in this game. It's all about the gameplay and not about how your soldier looks. So it's just keeping it to the gameplay, keeping it nice and simple. There's little tweaks there that you can make to your weapons to make them better. You know, you could choose a different site, choose where your recoil goes. But they've kept it quite simplified, which in my view is a good thing. So anyway, folks, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. That is fine. Don't forget to subscribe and I shall catch you in the next one. Take care.